girl what would a mirror do what would a mirror have been done <laughs> what Babes, it's your girl Amira Ali, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome to the Brad Babes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, today's video is going to be a new segment we are starting on the channel. It's gonna be called Incoming FaceTime. If you guys are not new here, then you guys know exactly what income incoming FaceTime is. It's something that I do on TikTok Live because a lot of people would tell me that my TikTok lives feel like a FaceTime call. It feels like we're friends just sitting on the phone, FaceTiming and chilling. So that's something that I do want to start on my channel, just doing something called incoming FaceTime, but different types of segments. So today, the type of video we'll be doing under incoming FaceTime will be what would a Mary do? This is a video idea that I got from Aaliyah's face. I was super inspired by her video. I loved her video. So basically what she did was she did it in a get ready with me type of format while she did her makeup. She just read scenarios that other people were going through and she basically said what she would do, which is essentially just giving advice. And I love that type of idea. I am somebody when I am inspired, I like to kind of make it my own in that type of way. So I didn't want to do like another get ready with me and do my makeup while I did it. I wanted to do something like I'm on the couch, like we just chilling at home, you're talking to me and I'm just giving you advice, that type of vibe. So I just wanted to be like literally an incoming FaceTime. I'm very big on being inspired and not imitating. Imitation is not flattery. It's just annoying. <laughs> so yeah i definitely wanted to make it like my own type of vibe so i feel like this is the type of vibe i want to do we just sit on the couch chilling besties you know what i'm saying we be internet besties and we just gonna be talking about everything you guys sent me a lot of scenarios on my instagram channel so make sure if you're not following me already you are following me on instagram all my social media pages are linked if you go on my instagram my tiktok um my twitter the link that's in my bio has all of my social media accounts because these fake pages are getting out of control you guys but honestly i don't have no control over that you know i feel like it that's just what comes with the territory people are gonna do that it's fine i'm not really even gonna address it or post it on my story to give them more attention and more follows y'all know who nurse brat is that's it point blank period anyway so yeah like i was saying make sure you guys are following me on all of my social media pages because that is where um, I posted the poll for you guys to go and submit like any type of scenarios. I've gotten DMs and I've also gotten some um, uh, responses under the actual post. So we're gonna be reading some. We're gonna be talking about what's going on. We're gonna like y'all. When I tell y'all y'all went crazy, I mean like y'all went crazy. We got a lot of stuff to talk about and unpack in these. I'm super excited to talk about it. Super excited to like be giving you guys advice. I also want you guys to know that anything that I give you guys advice on is literally just me and like from the type of person I am, my experience, my type of preference. You get what I'm saying? Like I don't want nobody to feel like I'm doing this because I'm perfect and I'm just in a place to give everybody advice because I have laws too don't get me wrong you know what i'm saying so um yeah that's definitely a disclaimer i wanted to put out there i'm got some kombucha this is the passion fruit tangerine flavor you know i've been chilling on the drinking so this kombucha will do and one thing about kombucha is gonna give you that little buzz okay if y'all hear anything in the background it can be either a the dryer that's going and drying some clothes or it could be wizard kelly in the room acting a fool i don't know which one it is <laughs> but at this point we just gonna get started we're gonna start this video and, and you know what i'm saying we let, let, let's get into it okay let, let's just let's start okay so somebody said what would you do if you couldn't get your eyelashes done for a whole year <laughs> i just wouldn't get my eyelashes done for a whole year i mean what, what am i supposed to do it's not gonna stop my bag it's not gonna stop my life it's not gonna stop anything that i have going for me lashes are just in addition a lot of people when they meet you on social media they forget that you know they're meeting you where you are now so they don't know where how you were before i was never really somebody who wore individuals ever um i used to do strips or i used to do no lashes at all like lashes wasn't something that i was always big on but ever since i started doing 
individuals around like 2020 2021 and i wasn't having a reaction because i would do i would take my steroids and my benadryl that's when i started doing it more frequently because i did not like the strip look i didn't like the big thick line i didn't like how it looked when i looked down it didn't look as natural like i just i've always liked individuals but i couldn't always get them done because i would have reactions so i get them because they're convenient but it's not something that i need i just do it because it's a low maintenance thing that makes me look high maintenance if that makes sense so yeah i don't i don't think i don't think she was trying to be funny by asking this question but that's that what would you do if you had to choose between what you wanted to do or what your parents want to do career-wise so you guys know my story y'all know i went through nursing i went to nursing i went that route because that was a route that my mom wanted me to do i did not want to do it at the time at the time i wanted to do either law or social work that was the two routes that i wanted to go on but honestly i feel like nursing played out for me so well and i actually did enjoy nursing so it's not like when i started nursing school i was just like oh my god i hate this like i can't do it of course it was hard of course it was difficult but it wasn't something that i hated you get what i'm saying like if your parents are trying to make you do something that you absolutely despise you absolutely do not like don't waste your time and um go that route just have a conversation with them and go from there that's just a conversation you have to have with your parents and you also have to be real with yourself because at the end of the day you're the person who is going to have to you know live this life you're going through with that career if you don't like it now you're going to be the one go, going back to school and you know you just don't want to waste your time so that's a conversation you one need to have with yourself figure out if this is something that you even like and two also have a conversation with your parents that's what i would do we got a long scenario here y'all so stay with me Hi girl, I'm 20. Me and my man just got an apartment together. I moved out of New York City where I was living with my mom due to her being extremely toxic. She was body shaming me, comparing me to other family members, etc. She, all, she always liked my man and even did things such as sending groceries to him, buying him a brand new battery for his car. However, all of a sudden that has changed. He's from Nigeria and my mom had this idea in her head that Africans are bad people and listens to stories that her friends and family tell her about Africans. Now that I live with him, she no longer wants to provide the documents that I need to continue going to school because I'm under 24 at, oh, wait, wait. She no longer wants to provide the documents I need to continue going to school. Because I'm under 24, I don't qualify as an independent, so I can't move forward with my goal to, be, uh, to become a doctor. She says that if I don't come home, quote unquote, that's what she put, she won't pay for school where I live. She, okay. <laughs> sorry y'all i'm reading this all over the place because there's no punctuation mark so sorry sorry she says that if i don't come home she won't pay for school where i live has great colleges that align with my major and my goals and i don't think going back to new york city is a good option for me what would you do okay so this sounds like you're 20 you're living with your man you're in school and your mom is helping you through school with the documents and all of that stuff financial aid etc etc now that she doesn't like your boyfriend i guess what you're saying is should you go back home and go to school or should you just find schools where you and your man live and I, in the message you said um where you live has great colleges that align with your major and your goals i think that that's something that you should definitely um you know look look for and look into because i feel like a lot of the times one thing about parents that i've realized um growing up and just through experience i feel like a lot of the times parents do not allow their children to have that space where they can make their own mistakes and be their own person and you know just have that space where they can you know live their own life a lot of parents live through their children and i don't know you know i don't know the full story obviously i just know a segment of what you are saying but i feel like a lot of the times when a parent is not satisfied with something that you're doing instead of letting you make your own mistake and still supporting you and letting you you know go through your own walk of life because I, I am a big believer that if you don't make mistakes you're not gonna learn from them you can't always learn from other people's mistakes you know what i'm saying so i feel like she is trying to control you by saying okay well if you don't come back home then i'm not gonna be paying for school and that's a decision that you also have to make like am i able to do this on my own am i able to find help and find my own school and this and that and if not you know it's going to be something that has to change maybe you need to start paying for school out of pocket because if you are set in your decision to stay with your man and stay in that relationship and you know um stay around him and go to school there then i just feel like there are options that you're going to have to look into so that you can you know stay where you're at because you're obviously happy with your man but i do think that the 
opinion of your parents is important when you're in a relationship i don't think it's an end all be all i don't think that like oh if my if my mom don't like this man i'm just i'm breaking up with him you know what i'm saying because i feel like at the end of the day it's about your happiness and if you're happy that should be enough for your parents to be happy but if they're not like i said that's a decision that you're just gonna have to vet through what i would do and see if there are ways that I can support my own self in school. Maybe I need to get a better job. Maybe I need to apply for this scholarship. There are so many ways to get help while you're in school. Scholarships was something that I wish I would have took more advantage of. I did not take out any scholarships or apply for any scholarships while I was in college. Look for scholarships. Maybe try to apply for grants. You know, there are so many advantages that are out here when you do a little bit of research that a lot of people don't talk about enough. So that those are things that I would look into if I'm not trying to move back home because you said you're not trying to move back home so you need to be looking into that so that you do not have to you know be under your mother's control i know you have a dream of becoming a doctor and i would never say to a young woman to put your dreams on hold for a man so i don't ever want you to stop pursuing becoming a doctor because of your relationship i just want you to find an alternative route such as scholarships grants and looking up things that can assist you with paying for school if your mother won't because you won't move back home that that makes sense also what i want you to do is while you guys are watching this if you guys have any pieces of advice for any situation or scenario that i read comment them down below okay all righty y'all we are busy so not a like pertaining to this but somebody said i just wanted to say thank you for spoiling us i enjoy watching you on my free times you are so welcome boo you are so very welcome and thank you so much for supporting me let's hit the next what what amira do scenario he said what would you do they know i'm filming a tiktok why would you have an emergency right now <laughs> i'm just playing you cut a person off of telling their blood sister's business mind you the sister was a friend too but i didn't want to ruin their relationship now she want to fight because she's mad that her sister found out and cut her off i don't know i think i need a little bit more context here okay so you cut your friend off because she told her blood sister's business but your her blood sister was also your friend but now the friend that you had that you had to cut off for telling the business want to fight you because her sister found out that she was talking ish and cut her sister off okay so you're asking what would i do i feel like at this age we're grown ain't no more fighting we're calling 911. <laughs> like where are we, we calling 911 we got too much to lose only people that don't have anything to lose are going to be sitting around here fighting and, and honestly i just don't think it's cute like i'm not about to mess up my hair and my nails and all of this like i think fighting is just like a class of that like for me personally so one i would not fight her i wouldn't pay her any mind um you cut her off you felt like that's what you needed to do and that's it. I feel like sometimes you just have to make decisions and understand that not everybody is going to be happy about it. Not everybody is going to accept it. And that's okay because it's not for them to accept. When you do things, you have to understand you're doing it for yourself. You're looking out for you. And sometimes it's okay to be selfish. You have to look out for you because if you don't look out for you, who's going to look out for you? Don't be fighting nobody. Like, we are just a little bit too old. Like, girl, you need to be fighting that wallet. <laughs> Somebody said, what would you do if your closest friend did not show up for your special day? Birthdays, graduation, etc. Um, so I feel like when it comes to birthday, like your best, your, your friends not showing up for you. I'm sorry y'all for the lighting. It keeps like going in and out. But this friend not showing up because they can't or are they not showing up because they won't? And I know either way it can be frustrating because we all want our friends there to celebrate us for our accomplishments and our special days, I understand that. But sometimes y'all, life do be lifing. And that's something that I had to understand, you know, as I'm getting older, that everybody is going through something. And sometimes people are not able to make it there for you and your special days simply because they can't. Now, if they won't, that is completely different. Like if you're showing up for your friend, they're not showing up for you. I definitely think that there is a conversation that needs to be had. For sure big advocate in talking to your friends like i'm not somebody who you know i'm not gonna talk to you about the same thing over and over and over again i feel like I, to some extent we're just gonna have to call it quits when it becomes too problematic but i am somebody who likes to have conversations with my friends and figure out like what's going on like hey girl you good like this is how i'm feeling blah 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 i feel like a lot of the times especially in this generation we have normalized a lot of things that should not be normalized like we should not be 
moving weird out of nowhere with our friends some things can literally be fixed with a simple conversation also a friendship that you need to be re-evaluating after that comment during that conversation that's definitely um a friendship i will reevaluate based on the conversation be talk to your friends girl what's up why haven't you been showing up for me especially when you've been showing up for them i know it's like very annoying and frustrating when you're the type of person that shows up for everybody else and nobody shows up for you i know i know but understand that there are some circumstances that don't allow people to be there as much as they want blah 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 just have a conversation see what the reasoning is and you know don't ignore your gut don't ignore your gut you know when something is bs you know how you feel just just go with your gut that's what i would say but definitely have a conversation especially when you guys have been friends for a long time i don't like to see friendships break up i'm very like serious about my friendships i don't like you know i feel like sometimes like breaking up with your friends is worse than breaking up with a man because like i don't know it's like my platonic friendships hold such a big weight like in my heart because it's a type of love that I can't even describe and I really do not like to see friendships in. So just have that conversation and go from there. Okay. Somebody said, what would you do if your best friend were to tell you that she is jealous of your relationship? Like, would you be upset or would you respect the fact that she was honest? I think this is how I feel. Like logically speaking, I think that jealousy I think that jealousy is a normal human feeling. Everybody feels a little bit of, of, of jealousy here and there. It's just a little weird when you feel jealous of somebody in your circle. That's what I would say. You know, I don't think it's normal to be jealous of your friend's relationship. I would respect the honesty, but I would definitely not want this person around because if you are jealous of my relationship, the type of man that I have and how he's loving on me and what's going on, what else are you jealous of? And also, I don't take jealousy lightly, you guys, because I've seen firsthand what jealousy can do. Sometimes jealousy goes to the extreme and you know, people can be unalived. That's how serious jealousy can be. But in most cases, you just never know. Those are the type of people that may start trying to act like, you know what I'm saying? Get with your man. Those are the type of people who may try to get you to break up with him. Because I feel like when you see your friends happy, when you see your friends living their best life, when you see your friends being loved, that's something that makes me happy. I love to see my friends in love and happy and being loved correctly. I love that because then being happy makes me so happy. I would never, look at my friend's relationship and be like oh my god i'm so jealous of this like don't get me wrong my friends will make little comments like oh my god you're so lucky i can't wait to have that they'll say that but they have never ever said oh my god i'm so jealous like no i think it's a different when you're like oh my god i'm so happy for you i cannot wait to experience this type of love like this is the type of love that i want to experience that's different than saying i'm jealous of your relationship that's definitely not a friendship i would personally want to keep um, I would respect the honesty 100%, no bad blood, no love lost, but I just would not want to have you. I would just slowly start to distance myself, slowly, because girl, if you're jealous of that, what else are you jealous of? You should be happy for your friends. You should want to celebrate, you know, like, I'm just, you got to be careful, because those be them ones. It's a long one, y'all. Okay, y'all got to follow me here. Hey, boo, how are you? I do have a scenario. So basically I met this guy back in 2018. We got into a relationship, but he went to jail for carrying a firearm. We were in and out of a relationship because child dealing with that is a lot. He ended up messing with a girl because she offered him to give him a place to stay, send him money, etc. After years, after years of self-reflection, he realizes he messed up and he wants to start fresh. He's getting everything together as in his life has a job his own apartment he's going back to school for a trade he's also willing to go to church with me my thing is trust issues right now i think he's always doing something and he tells me all the time it's only he tells me all the time it's only me and he loves me he says nothing is going on and he doesn't show signs of cheating he said he's willing to give me his instagram and snapchat passwords this is to gain trust but he says he's he says but he says going through his phone is OD and that's that privacy, I guess you're saying evasion of privacy. But I feel like he should be able to give me the phone if he wants me to build, build trust. But then again, I feel like checking his phone all the time is a lot. 
Do you normally check your significant other's phones? Also, he has a mentor who helps him with everything, like helped him find a job, etc. And she's always willing to hear him out at any time. But I think I'm a bit territorial and I hate sharing. Their friendship just doesn't sit right with me. But on the other hand, nothing is going on. My questions are, should I check his phone? Do you think he's hiding something? How can I start trusting him? And just basically, what would you do? Okay, so let's sum this up. So basically what she's saying is she met a guy, he's, you know, he's doing well in life, but she just has this gut feeling that he's doing something. And one thing I will say about a woman's intuition, it is never wrong. That is one thing I will say about women's intuition, even if there's no evidence, even if there is, there's, you don't see something, right? And it's not directly in your face. I am a big advocate for <laughs> intuition once you get that gut feeling there is a reason why i really do believe that's how god i don't know if she's spiritual or not i don't know if you guys are spiritual or not but i believe that's how god speaks to you that's how god lets you know this ain't right this ain't right something is going on so i would never ignore that gut feeling i don't think that you should either if you feel like something's going on 10 times out of 10 something is going on as far as trust in my opinion, I do not think that you can have any relationship without trust. Once there is no trust, there is no way you are going to have a successful relationship. Because if you don't trust your partner, there is no way you guys can build anything else. I, I truly and honestly believe once trust is not there, I don't think trust can ever really be rebuilt. In my opinion, I'm not saying that for, you know, for others, it doesn't work like that. But for me, once trust is broken, I don't think that we can ever rebuild it because how I think it's like, okay, like let's say you get cheated on and you forgive your man and y'all working on things. Two months later, he goes out with his boys. He not answering his phone. Now you think it back to the time when he was cheating. Now you not, you get what I'm saying? Like it's always gonna be in the back of your head. When somebody betrays you in a, in a certain type of way and you don't trust them, I think it's very hard to just have a healthy relationship is what I would say. Um, but as far as your question, do I normally check my significant other's phones? No, me and my man, we do not check each other's phone. We don't go through each other's phone. If I get that urge to go through your phone, I shouldn't be with you. Um, she also said, do you think he's hiding something? Like I said, I definitely do believe in woman's intuition. I believe in that gut feeling. If you believe that he's hiding something, girl, you know he's hiding something. Like, if you feel that feeling, then you already know something's going on. You may not have the actual proof, but I just think that even if you don't have the proof, it is hard to just continue a relationship when there is no trust. I feel like things like trust, communication, comprehension, those are basic things that you need to have a healthy and prosperous relationship. And without those things, it's really hard to do that. So I feel like in a way you kind of already know what you need to do. Next part of her question was, how can I start trusting him? If you have to go through these extreme lengths where you need phone passwords, where you need this, 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 and that to have trust, I don't think that even when he does do all of those things, you will still trust him. I just don't think so. And I don't think, like, I, I feel like, as we get older, we have to understand that people are gonna do what they wanna do. A man can give you his phone password. He can give you social security number for all that matters. He can give you all of this. If he wants to cheat, he's going to find a way to cheat. If he wants to do something, he's gonna find a way to do it. At the end of the day, we cannot stress about what others are doing. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel like you should stress yourself trying to figure out what he's doing, what he's not doing. If it's something that he wants to do, he's gonna get it done. Regardless, I'm telling you, I've seen men go and buy little flip phones to call that girl, keep little numbers in the wallet. And little, so you just never, ever, 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 ever know. You know what I'm saying? And as far as his mentor, I believe you said, um, you know, that has been helping him with everything. I just felt like if you don't trust him, his mentor being a woman is not gonna make the situation any easier. So that's definitely something that I would say, like in my opinion, what I would do is, at, at this age, if you're asking 25 year old Amira, well obviously because this is what would Amira do, I wouldn't even waste my time. I am very intentional now of where I spend my time and who has access to me. I don't wanna be in a space with somebody that I don't trust. I don't wanna be in a space with somebody who I don't feel like like, I just don't feel like this is gonna go anywhere. You know, sometimes we really have to look at things as black and white and no gray areas. That's what I've learned to do. If you don't trust somebody, if, if you keep getting this gut feeling, if you feel like you need all these passwords and access to all of this to trust him again, I don't really think that's how a relationship should work. And I feel like in my opinion, what I would personally do is just cut it off. 
period that's what i would do um, but like I said below you guys you could definitely drop some some suggestions down below That's just what I feel. I don't think you know trust should be hard I feel like when you are in a relationship some with somebody trust should be given until it's broken And once it's broken if you decide to stay and repair it that is on you me personally I do believe that once trust is broken. It's almost impossible to gain it back that's just how i feel that's just in my experience that's the type of person i am i'm not saying you cannot forgive somebody for little things that they've done but when you break trust like you betray me that is hard to get over it is it's hard to move past it it's hard to forget it i don't think you will ever forget it so yeah i don't think you know building trust should be this difficult i don't think it should be this hard i feel like you should trust your intuition anytime you go against your intuition god is going to show you why you should have never done it in the first place child what would amira do if you found out you were if you were talking to a guy and then he told you that he has stage four cancer <laughs> um oh that's not funny but like i'm just shocked at the question um one how long were we talking um you know that matters because that depends if you're gonna stick it out or not like if i was just talking to you for two weeks and you tell me that you can't think that i'm just gonna hold you down through all this you know like or we just started talking, we should have started dating two days ago and you tell me this, you get what I'm saying? So I think the length of how long you guys have been talking or dating definitely matters. And it's really not a matter of what would I do. It's not to say that, oh, once you say you have something like that, I'm leaving because if you're my man, my man, or like we've been, you know, we're in this together, like we go together real bad, I would definitely be there, of course, no doubt. But if, we are just casually seeing each other and you let me know something like that it's not to say that i'm just gonna be like but it's not to say that i'm gonna be like you know what i'm saying like it's uh, it's, it's a sticky thing i just think i need a little bit more context how long were you guys dating what kind of relationship is this especially if we're not in a relationship i don't feel like i would have the obligation to do that like it's, it's just like i need to know more about the relationship before i answer that question um what would you do if your boyfriend called you fat during a time of depression and feeling down um i would leave that man <laughs> i tend to be very harsh when it comes to women who let go of themselves gain weight and you know things happen with their appearance because we know that a lot of the times men are superficial a lot of the, men fall in love with your appearance first before they find out who you are as women of course we do like you know you may want an attractive man but we are going to fall in love with the type of person you are it's very opposite so when those superficial things that he wanted you for start to fade away you start to see the real him does he really even love me for me yeah he may have, may have been attracted to me and may have been wanted me because i have a nice body and i have this and i have that but when those things fade and that's how you're gonna treat me. I feel like that's very telling of his character. And what's gonna happen if you guys stay together and you have a kid? What's gonna happen when your body changes? You know, with life, you just never know. I personally don't feel like that's the type of person that I would wanna be with. I feel like if you love me for me, there are other ways to say it. Like, don't get me wrong, we all want a partner that's gonna be completely honest with us. We all want somebody who's gonna be like, look babe, me let's, let's you know what i'm saying let's get in the gym let's do this let's do that but to just say fat while you're you said you're depressed and feeling down like kicking somebody when they're down is never okay i don't think that that's the type of partner you need so sometimes he may just need to pick you up and you know just be there in your time of need but to kick you while you're down and call you fat i just think that's very telling of his character and that's not somebody that you would you should want around you in your circle you know just in your close space okay this is very small i don't know why i can't really see it but let's see so <laughs> So I've got this friend who I've known for years. She always tries to project her beliefs on me. For example, each time I try to tell her something that happened to me knowing very well I wasn't at fault, she tries to make me feel bad about it. She also talks about me to other people. It's so hard for me to cut her off even though I know what she's doing. She's never positive, brings up a positive situation, and she'll say something negative right away. What would Amira do? girl? What would Amira do? What would Amira have been done? <laughs> what would Amira do? This is not even a what would Amira do. Immediately. No, like yesterday. No, like last year. First of all, why is it so hard for you to cut somebody like that off? I feel like, you ever heard the saying, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are? I feel like this is a perfect scenario to apply it to because if you have somebody in your close circle 
who you can tell is just being very negative with you never has anything nice to say always try to turn things around and make it seem like things are your your fault why is that somebody that is hard for you to come cut off why is that something that you're even allowing in your energy in your circle in your or like why are you even allowing that i don't think that this is a question i should even have to answer you know what you need to do you know exactly what you need to do that's not somebody who deserves access to you that's not somebody who is a friend and then you also said she talks about you to other people why are you still there like it's very obvious all the signs are right in front of you i feel like sometimes you know what god will do god will continuously allow somebody to hurt you and hurt you more and more and more until you literally cannot take it anymore until you let this person go i feel like this is already bad she's talking about you she's negative friends don't talk about friends behind each other's backs and it's one thing if you don't know about it but you actually know about it and i think that that's very telling i don't think that this is somebody who's a friend and i think you know that and i think you already know what you need to do i don't know why it's hard for you to cut this person off there's also some self-reflection that you need to do on your end but you know what you need to do immediately what would you do if your man who also has the same income acts to go half on the bills because he thinks it's not fair i would say what i would do is i would evaluate the type of woman that i am so let's say you're the type of woman who wants to be taken care of you're the type of woman when you live with a man you want him to pay the bills if that's the type of woman you are then maybe this is a conversation that you guys need to have if you're the type of woman who is okay with 50 50 who's okay with putting the bills then i don't think that necessarily did this would be a problem for you but i think maybe because you asked it maybe you are not really feeling it i think that's a conversation that you need to have with your partner and also reevaluate on your end um because a lot of women that I know, they like 50-50, they do 50-50, it works for them. I feel like do what works for your relationship. But if you're the type who doesn't want it, that's a conversation I need to have. And if he's not willing to be that man to step up and take care of what he needs to take care of, then I don't think that's a relationship that you need to be in. I am not a fan of telling people to leave their relationship, but I am all for people doing what's best for them. And if this relationship doesn't serve you in the way that you want it to serve you, what's the point? We all need to be very intentional about where we're spending our time, who we are allowing in our close and inner space because like, it's important. All right, guys, so this is gonna be the second to last one. Hi, Nurse Brat. First off, I think you are so inspiring and nothing you do is taken for granted and I hope God continues to bless you immensely. Thank you. I am currently a new grad working in the pediatric ED and even though I just started orientation, I have been so overwhelmed by the wealth of information that I am receiving. I already knew that ER nursing was going to be a challenging job, but coming out of nursing school, I feel like a fish out of water. I know that every nurse started off where I am at now, and I really love nursing and think it's what I was created to do, but at times everything gets really overwhelming and I wonder if I am capable enough. With that being said, do you have any advice for a new grad who is also going to start her first job in the ER? Also, thank you for opening up this platform for us to ask for your advice. Of course, number one, um, First and foremost, I have so many videos on my page on TikTok, and I also have a video on my YouTube channel. Before I um, transition my channel strictly into lifestyle content and like stuff like this, I definitely did have some nursing videos up about nursing school, and I have a video that is detailed like on what you need to know before you start in the ER. I would definitely start with that video. Also, go through my um, TikTok videos as well. I have so many, like I have playlists on my TikTok, so you'll definitely be able to find the video. That's one. Number two, when you are getting into the ER, like I said in that video as well, it is extremely hard to feel like your feet hit the floor because every day you are learning new things. That's why I also said, you need to take it a day at a time. You need to be easy with yourself. You need to keep a notebook to keep all of this information on you because if not, you're gonna constantly feel overwhelmed. You're gonna constantly feel like you don't know anything. You're gonna constantly have those feelings like, am I good enough, am I not? I definitely think that having a, you know, a little notebook with all your information or even having a notes thing in your phone where you just keep a whole bunch of information that you learn is super important. But I'm really glad that you asked this question because when I tell y'all I am working, working behind the scenes, y'all, I'm working, working. I see a lot of y'all DMs and I'm really sorry if I'm not able to get back to everybody. You guys don't even understand. The other day I replied to DMs and I have 400 more to reply to. I see y'all messages, I do. But with all the questions that I get, I think it's better to just create something that I can address everybody at once. Everybody wants new grad advice, ER advice, this, this advice. I'm coming out with things, you guys. They're rolling in, they're coming in slowly, you know what I'm saying? I know it's just me 
who is running my TikTok, my YouTube, my hair business, who's working on all these things behind the scenes. So I'm just, and I still work full time. So it's coming, you know what I'm saying? It's rolling in, I'm working, I'm working, and I have so many things in store for y'all where you guys have so much resources from me. Instead of just, you know, trying to DM me, there will be actual resources where you can go and get information like that. So for, for right now, what I would say is take it a day at a time, be kind to yourself, say nice things to yourself. I believe in the power of the tongue. So I would just say, take it a day at a time, you know, take in all the knowledge that you need to, keep a notebook and you know, go through the motions. ER is one of the most difficult specialties in critical care because it's so broad. And there's, you can go from seeing, you know, learning about abdominal pain in one room to chest pain in the other room. It's not like, a, uh, uh, specialty I would say it, it is a specialty but it's not specialized in one single thing like ER like um, labor and delivery or something like that so just be kind to yourself girl you got this and don't forget I'm coming out with a lot of stuff too I got you boo. I got you covered all right y'all next question Tamika somebody said what would you do if you saw a video of a girl your man used to date dancing on him while you're home with his kid it's giving call that man Tell him come home and get his baby and i'm oh i'm off this i'm off this because i'm about to beat the baby i'm about to beat the episode the <laughs> see what i mean when i be telling y'all like men are unhinged like your girl is at home watching your kid while you're out dancing on your ex does that make sense? I don't know. Like, I feel like sometimes for men, two plus two does not equal four. Two plus two be equal in like a hundred. That makes no type of sense. Make it make sense. But me personally, come get your kid. And I'm off this. Well, I'll be the fuck. <laughs> I was just playing this a TikTok, y'all, please. You know how y'all how y'all like to touch so, But yeah, no, seriously, it's very disrespectful. And I am becoming a woman of not too many words these days. These days I'm more of action get this baby and I'm out of here don't I won't even do the ah the crazy rah rah come get your baby and I'm off this it's giving up no it's giving up no it's giving come get your baby it's giving don't make me call Porsche <laughs> All right. what would Amira do if your significant other cheated but didn't tell you, but you didn't find out slash they didn't tell you till years later. I think that that still holds the same amount of weight that it would if I find out when it recently happened. Like, but it just would hurt me 10 times more because you've allowed all this time to go by and I didn't know. I feel like that's still the same thing. Your stuff is just never gonna be there. It's actually gonna be even worse because it's like, wow, you did this years ago and you still sat there in my face with me all this time and all these years and it, it would just be a different type of her. I definitely feel like it would have the same impact on the relationship as it would if I found out earlier, but 10 times worse because it's just like, when did you, what, how did, wait, huh? And you know, when I did get cheated on when I was younger, I was in my like my teens. And thank you God, it only took that one situation for me to learn my lesson. But when I when that happened to you when I was younger, I was the rah rah rah. Da, 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 it's just giving pack my bags and dip. It's giving leave while you're at work and leave a note. It's giving hire movers while you're at work and when you come home, the whole place is empty and you just see a note with the screenshots of everything and the videos or whatever evidence you'll just see that there. And you'll just never hear from me again. I'm talking about number change, everything. Like that's just what it's giving. I am a woman. I feel like now, like learning men, they don't care for the rah 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 rah. They care for actions, like the complete silence, like the ghosting. Those are the things that really, really, really be having the messed up in the head, baby. So all you gotta do, it, as much as it's gonna hurt, as much as it's gonna kill you, silence. When a woman is silent, that's her most dangerous weapon. And I've learned that. Cause when my man gave me tight and I just be, he's going crazy. Like he don't know what I'm thinking. He don't know what my next move is. He don't, keep him guessing baby. Keep him guessing. <laughs> yeah, but overall I just don't stand for cheating. I just don't like it. Like I would still be 
gone but yeah that's just gonna wrap up a what would a mirror do oh my god this is our first one let me know how y'all like it for the next one you guys I actually want you guys to send actual scenarios like just like how the few ones that I read that were a little longer I want you guys to actually give me detail on what's going on like that I don't want you guys just to be asking like regular questions because this is not a q a this is a what would a mirror do so give me a scenario give me because it's hard to as you guys can see with some of the questions y'all asked me it was really hard to give what i would honestly do because i didn't have enough context so i don't want hypothetical situations i want real life scenarios what would you do if this i have a friend of this blah blah, blah. my friend is doing this da, 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 da. give me detail so i can give you an honest answer of what would i do but i think for our first one we did pretty well let me know what you guys think about the new segment of incoming facetime with different like topics like if today this video is what would a mirror do maybe the next one can be something else you guys just let me know like i always say you know i always take you guys' opinion into my, into consideration when it comes to my content i always do actually one of the creators that really 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 go hard when it comes to you guys as far as your opinions i really don't play about it like whatever you ask me to do as long as i'm able to do it i do deliver so let me know what you what other things you guys want to see for our incoming facetime segment i really want to come up with something like wind down wednesdays we can even do something like that where um, every wednesday we do a live i don't know we'll see we will see we will see i want to come up with themes but incoming facetime since it's something that i've been doing for so long on tiktok it's definitely something that i want to bring over to youtube just in a different way so i'm always open to feedback suggestions y'all can dm me i can comment it down below whatever i love you guys so much thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'm gonna see y'all in the next video love you bad babes